This video is called Disproving Evolution, No Transitional Fossils. And as you might guess, I'm going to do my best to show you guys that the fossil record does not reflect the evolutionary theory. And I realize that uh, perhaps much of this information has already been argued and, and displayed and it may just be old news for some of you guys, but I figured it was worth sharing. And if you've seen some of my videos before, you know I'm not here to tick you off. I'm not here to make people frustrated. I'm not here to risk uh, my reputation and my relationship with all of you who watch this video and in hopes that uh, you know, you'll know you just listen and consider what I have to say and, and uh, lay your biases aside, if you would. If you look in the more information box, you can box, you can see the link where I got all this information from all these scientific journals. And remember, this is legit stuff. I didn't make this stuff up. This is coming from credited sources. I will start with the information of uh, uh, and mammals evolving from whales. Um, my, first set, my first source says, scientists have claimed recently that they have found a walking whale, which they say is the ancestor of modern whales. The skeleton of this fossil, however, is very incomplete with no hip bones, humerus, or shoulder blades. Most of the backbone is missing and there is no guarantee that all the bones came from the same species. Reconstruction of these scant parts would not be sufficient to confirm whether the animal swam or walked. And my next part from the Science Journal says, The evolutionary transition to the first mammal, which probably happened in just one or two at most lineages, is still an enigma or uh, a mystery. And that's from the evolutionary perspective. So they're even admitting that it's, it's not looking good right now. I'll now discuss the uh, evolutionary of mankind through and its relation to primates. Uh, the transition from insectivore to primate is not documented by fossils. The basis of knowledge about the transition is by inference from living forms. In other words, it's speculatory. That's all it really is. It's people coming together and, and trying to fit uh, all these missing pieces from what they have. And, and right now, they don't have a whole lot to work with. In spite of recent findings, the time and place of origin of or, or origin of order primates remain shrouded in mystery. So like I said, it's it's not looking really good. And now Proconsul and Rema Pithecus. A recent analysis of the hip bones of Proconsul indicate that the creature should not be regarded as a missing link. A complete Proconsul left hip bone was compared to two, 275 hip bones of modern monkeys and apes showing that it generally monkey-like sharing features with common baboons. Um, moving on, until 1979, Ramapithecus was called a human ancestor. This was based on the assessment of a few teeth and small skull fragments. Re reconstruction of a full skull found in the Himalayan mountains suggests that it, it's, uh, there are actually fossils of ancestors of the orangutan and not humans. Meaning it's not a transitionary creature, it is just an ape. Australopithecus. The first impression given by all the skulls from the different populations of Australopithecus is of a distinctly ape-like creature. The ape-like profile of Australopithecus is so pronounced that its outline can be superimposed on that of a female chimpanzee with a remarkable close, closeness of fit. It stands in strong con contrast to modern human beings. Also, uh, the skull is in fact so overwhelmingly simian or ape-like as opposed to the human that the contrary proposition could be equated to an assertion that it's black and white. So uh, Sir Zolly Zuckerman believes it's very simple. Uh, apes, human beings, black and white. He believes that it's very distinguishable, that it's not uh, a missing link, and that's easy for everyone to see. And of course the famous fossil Lucy. A lot of people have taken a crack at Lucy, but I figure I might as well. Uh, do the same. It was assembled by anthropologist Donald Johansson from fossil fragments found in Ethiopia in 1974. The bones pieced together form 40% of a possibly female skeleton that was assessed to be 3.5 million years old. At a lecture at the University of Missouri on November 20th, 1986, Johansson confessed that the knee joint found 60 to 70 meters lower in the strata than the rest of the bones and 2 to 3 kilometers away. Johansson said that he put the knee joint on Lucy because it was atomically similar, not because it actually belonged to the skeleton. The only reason Johansson and others say that Lucy walked upright and that it was a, 
a human ancestor is because of the presence of this wrongly added knee joint. And a new analytical technique which uses a scanning electron microscope to read the patterns of bone deposits on skulls has been used on Lucy to factually analyze its fossil relationships. Analysis of Lucy's skull de deposition pattern indicates that it is the same as chimpanzees, chimpanzees and all together different from humans. So there you have it about Lucy once again. Now Homo erectus and Homo habilis. A fossilized human remains have been recently discovered in Tanzania. They have been dated at 6 million years old. This is older than all the fossil remains of Homo erectus and the Australopithecines which are believed to be the evolutionary predecessors of human beings. So we have a time issue here. Um, Homo habilis was first constructed from fossil bones discovered in 1964. The bones were found scattered among stone tools and other bones of pigs, horses, catfish, and tortoises. The scattered bones were put together and Homo habilis was invented. Recent examination of the finger bones of this fossil has led scientists to conclude that in overall structure the hand is similar to that of chimpanzees or female gorilla so it's not necessarily it doesn't seem to be a transitional form but just something that's already existed Richard Leakey has confessed that he agrees with others who have criticized his father's reconstruction of Homo habilis skulls so once again it's not looking good if, if scientists who are involved with this say this this isn't right then it, it seems to me that that uh, the fossil record does not absolutely does not reflect the evolutionary theory neanderthals neanderthals primitive features are now considered to be the result of a nutritional deficiencies and pathological conditions they are now classified as fully human moving on Fossils of modern humans and Neanderthals have been found together at the same level in the same fossil sites. It is therefore scientifically improper to state that modern humans evolved from Neanderthals, obviously because they coexisted. And now I'm just going to give a bunch of quotes uh, concerning the human evolutionary tree. The fossils that decorate our family tree are so scarce that there are still more scientists than specimens. The remarkable fact is that all the physical evidence we have for human evolution can still be placed with room to spare inside a single coffin. And that was Daryl, excuse me, Dr. Lael Walston. Something I've always argued that is that uh, if evolution is true, there should be billions of these intermediary fossils, but there are only a handful of debatable ones. I mean, sure, fossilization happens only in certain circumstances, but we have millions of dinosaur bones, and why why don't we have a bunch of these intermediary fossils? It doesn't it doesn't add up for me. I'm sorry. Um, moving on, uh, this is William R. Fix in his book The Bone Peddlers, and he is an evolutionist. The fossil record pertaining to man is still so sparsely known that those who insist on positive declarations can do nothing more than jump from one hazardous surmise to another and hope that the next dramatic discovery does not make them utter fools. As we have seen, there are numerous scientists and popularizers today who have the terminity to tell us that there is no doubt how man originated, if only they had the evidence. So this is an evolutionist who's trying to play it smart and, and is doing his best to be honest. And now, paleontologists Mark Leakey says, in the present state of our knowledge, I do not believe it is possible to fit the known hominid human-like uh, fossil into a rel reliable pattern. So it's like we have the evolutionary theory and how it should be laid out, and it doesn't fit. Now, Dr. Robert Martin. So one is forced to conclude that there is no clear-cut scientific picture of human evolution. Moving on, uh, Ronald R. West. Contrary to what most scientists write, the fossil record does not support the Darwinian theory of evolution because it is this theory, and there are several, which we use to interpret the fossil record. By doing so, we are guilty of circular reasoning if we then say the fossil record supports this theory. And I'm going to sum up with the quote I had before by Stephen Jay Gould. The absence of fossil evidence for intermediary stages has been a persistent and nagging problem for evolution. And that makes sense why... Uh, with what Stephen Jay Gould just said, why he would come up with this punctuated equilibrium theory.